And if we're like somebody in the earth, then that means we have the same authority that they have. And we've been talking about the conversation of authority and how we're not just supposed to be regular human beings if you're in Christ. You're supposed to have dominion over everything that belongs to you because you operate in the authority of Jesus. And I remember probably two weeks ago, I remember the spirit of God wanting me to talk about or have the conversation of authority and emotions. And the spirit of God started dealing with me and um, probably a little bit last week, he wanted me to have um, a mental healing Sunday. And that was what came up in my spirit. And I, and I believe he wanted me to call it that as I was continuously praying, because there's a conversation going on about mental health right now that's real, real prevalent in our culture. But I believe he wanted us to call it mental healing because I believe that Jesus Christ is the healer. I believe that God is a healer. I totally agree with, with the conversation of mental health and that your mind should be healthy. But I also believe that your mind can be healed. I believe that your body is supposed to be healed. I believe that you're supposed to walk in divine health. That does not mean that you won't ever have challenges. One example I would like to use is when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. The Bible says that Jesus wept. The problem is Jesus already knew as God that he was going to raise him back up. So why is it that Jesus, knowing that you're going to raise this man back up, why would you cry anyway? Because Jesus was also fully human. And a lot of times we think that because we're expressing emotions that we're not in faith. No, you have emotions. You're supposed to have emotions. You're supposed to feel it. You're supposed to embrace it. But watch this. The same way Jesus felt emotion as a human is the same way he felt the same power of God when he raised Lazarus from the dead. So let me sum that up. You're supposed to master your emotions. Your emotions should not master you. I'm going to say that again. You should be able to master your emotions, not in your own power but through the authority of Jesus and your emotions should not master you. And I think we live in a generation where our emotions have mastered us. Our emotions have captured us to a place where we get these uncontrollable moments of weeping, these uncontrollable moments of depression. How many of you all ever been through depression? I'm raising my hand because I have. How many of you all ever been very, very worried before? I'm raising my hand because I have. How many of you ever been through a season of anxiety? I'm not talking about anxiety for the moment. I'm talking about a season of anxiety. That's what we want to talk about on today. The Bible talks about in Philippians 4, 7, that he will give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. It's a peace. We live in a generation where peace seems like it's something that is um, done away with. It seems, and listen, peace don't always have to be like very chaotic. Peace could, a disturbance of peace could just be, it's always noise. It's just always noise. Like, if you think about it, we live in a generation that don't like to be silent. Like, it don't like to be silent. Like, our parents grew up in a generation, our grandparents grew up in a generation where the TV would cut off at a certain time. I don't know, I don't remember, but my grandma used to tell me when, when channels would go off, you see the American flag waving, it's time to go to bed. It's, it's time to wrap it up. Nowadays, it's 24-7. It's on your phone 24 seven. Instagram don't ever close. It's open 365, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Facebook don't ever close. You can always see something. And whenever you need a fix, one guy, I don't know if you ever, I'm pretty sure you've seen this video by a guy named Simon Sinek. He talks about how the same feeling that you get from an Instagram like is the same hits you get from cocaine, the same hits you get from alcohol. So we don't have restrictions. We have restrictions on alcohol, right? You gotta be 21. But think about a 12 year old kid going to an alcohol cabinet whenever he wants and it's free for all. He compares it to the same thing as getting an Instagram like. It's the same thing. We have young people struggling now because they're not getting enough likes. They did a poll, I was reading an article, they did a poll that if a child or a teenager, it's probably about 30 teenagers, if they didn't get above 200 likes, they took the picture down. 200 likes. 200. I don't know about y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like when I get 50, I'm like, oh. 
uh oh, this must have been popping today. The fit must have been straight today. You know what I'm saying? But 200, but they put their value in likes instead of putting their value in the one that really loves them. But because you, before you ever saw a like, you were already loved. You were already loved. And I don't know what you're dealing with on today. I don't know what you're dealing with. But I believe by the spirit of God that we're supposed to have a conversation. And listen, number one, this is a no judgment zone. We don't judge anybody. We don't judge anybody here. You can be safe here. You can be free here. Listen, I came here to let a lot out. I came here to let a whole lot out. I don't know if you heard about it, but there's a pastor who committed suicide, I believe, Monday night. Gerard Wilson, pastor committed suicide. I mean, he had a huge church, thriving church. And I think a lot of times we see that in ministry and we think if I just get that, I'll be happy. But listen, if you don't have a resting heart or rested mentality in Jesus, nothing will ever secure you. Whatever you want, you can have the perfect man, perfect wife, perfect job, whatever it is. But if your heart is not settled in Jesus and if your mind's not settled in Jesus, it means nothing. And I don't know what he may have been dealing with. But I know as a pastor that if you're if you don't know that God has called you to this. Oh, it's rough. It's rough. It's very rough. And you know what the thing about it was, bro? He was a mental health advocate. A lot of times we have calls in our lives that we're supposed to fulfill. And it's like the very thing that you're advocating for is the very thing that you can be struggling with. My God, that's the Holy Ghost. I think a lot of times we think that, well, I'm called to do this, but I still struggle with that. No, 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 no. I, God has called you to it because he's going to give you the power. He's going to give you the grace and he's going to give you the power to talk about it. Maybe our greatest struggle is our greatest anointing. Maybe your greatest struggle, maybe the thing, maybe the thing that you're believing God to stop or, or you're believing God to come out of. Maybe God's going to use that. To set other people free because the greatest two words I believe that can set people free is me too. Look at the me too movement. Me too. You got an anger problem. Me too. You mean God can still use you? Yes. God still uses me. I listen. I'm telling you, I got a lot of stuff going on, but God doesn't use me because of me. He uses me in spite of me, in spite of me. He's using you in spite of you. He's using you because of the grace of Jesus. So this is what I want to do. I want to um, open the floor and I want to I want to call this portion the relatability portion where we just kind of talk about what we're kind of dealing with as far as um, these complex emotions. And I want to start off with the subject of worry. Um, just being transparent, how many of you like kind of deal with worry a lot? You worry about things. And, um, if you would like me to go first, I'll go first. Um, I, I, I believe that I believe that I worry sometimes because I believe I worry sometimes because it's like when I, I worry about this this ministry a good bit because I I think that when you don't know every move yourself when you when you it's almost like you want to have control over everything. Like, God, what am I supposed to do here? What am I supposed to do there? You want to know every single move. You want to know every single thing. Okay, if I do this, if I do that, it's almost like Legos or it's almost like a puzzle, you know, you, or, like, or anything that has instructions. You want every single instruction so that it can be built. And sometimes I sit back and I worry about, okay, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? And a lot of times it's just a lot of mental, mental things that go on. And I think that's, one of the things that possibly I just want control over every answer immediately. Like I want the answer immediately, you know? And um, so those are one of the reasons why I worry. What about any of you all? And it's okay, y'all can just go, just go. It don't, it's all good, it's all good. Overthinking. So like you, you feel like you, there's an issue, there's a problem and you just constantly get it, try to get that solution out or? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think it's. I think it's more so. Uh, I think it's more so uh, seeking approval from from other people. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's more. Yeah. It's more so. Mhm. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Anybody else? That's real. Oh my God, that's real. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Sometimes I feel like I'm trash as a father. I'm being for real. I feel like I'm some smack sometimes as a father. I will discipline my son sometimes and he will go back and do the exact same thing. Are you kidding me? You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I feel like I'm god awful. So I'm there right with you, sister. Sometimes I'm like, Lord, why? Why? I don't understand it. So I get it. So I, I, get, I get that. I, I relate to that. Most definitely. You said same. You said what's up as far as? Yeah, same. Well, same with both of you, though. Both of you, um, you know, I'm not the making sure my child is okay and worrying about, is she getting enough to eat? Mm-hmm. Is, am I doing this right? Am I doing that right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That goes hand in hand with mm-hmm. like, I think being a new mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I, I, I remember them days. I, I'm still in them now. <laughs> God, doing that. I'm telling you. Even though I'm not a parent, I, I feel that from like from from a, I'm a teacher like you don't know. I, I feel that from that aspect. Yeah. Um, because I guess uh, I'm a band director, to be even more specific. Specific, well, assistant band director. Mm-hmm. And basically, um, basically, uh, I, I best put it like. Like he's the Brian and I'm Kyrie. Okay, 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 okay. Or he's Jordan and I'm Kyrie. Okay, y'all must be nice then, cause you made some. You said LeBron and Kyrie, and then you said Jordan and Pippen. Okay, y'all must be really, really dope. Okay, I feel it. I feel it. Anybody else? Like you kind of wrestle with worry. You kind of wrestle with um, not understanding everything. Anybody? Else? Mm. So when you start to worry, you're worrying about being worried. And then you're worried right. about the That's worry good. that you put on top of that. Or when you're angry, somebody cut you off. Now you're not only angry at the person who cut you off, you're mm. angry at yourself for getting so upset about something so small. Right, right, now you right. can't get out of being right. angry at yourself for right. being angry. And it's just this feat. So I, once I read that, it's, it put my worry into perspective. Mm. Because it wasn't the thing, whatever it was that I was worried about or that I was anxious about or mm-hmm. that I was upset about, it was the fact that I kept it going after yeah. the fact and yeah. I only built on top of it yeah. instead of removing it. Yeah. I think a lot of times the things we get upset at are just the leaves, but we don't ever find out what's the, what's the root of the tree. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, that, I think that maybe, like you just said, like we, don't get, we really don't get mad if somebody cut us off on the road. Right. It's the fact that there's a root that possibly could be a year ago, two years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, and we still worry about that. Before I move on, man, I really want to. Um, I would want. I really want to keep this thing going on about worry, because um, because that's something that, like on the outside, we look like we're okay, we look like we're fine, but mentally, it's so many things that that's going on. So, there's anybody else like struggling or dealing with worry? Like, this is a safe place to really talk about that, because listen, I promise you, you are not alone in this. And that's another thing that I want to make clear. I'm probably going to say that about 10 more times. You are not alone. That's the number one trick of the enemy. He wants to think that you're the only one dealing with whatever you're dealing with. The Bible says there is no temptation that is uncommon to man. That means if you thought it, I thought it. That means if you dealt with it, I dealt with it. But watch this. He says that there is an escape because God is faithful. and He will always provide a way of escape. God is faithful even when we feel like we're being unfaithful. His faithfulness is not based on our faithfulness. That's how good God is. So if there's anybody else, man, like we open, like, and, we, and I'm going to just take my time with it. And I, we, gonna, we can camp out here all day. I'm for real. I'm, I'm serious. Because one of the revelations that I got, because I taught a sermon probably like last year. And as I was prepping for it, the spirit of God told me something, Will, bro. And, it, and, I, and I, tears came to my eyes. He said, you don't have a worry problem. He said, you have a worship problem. He says, you don't have a worry problem. So you have a worship problem. He said, the problem is you're worshiping the problem instead of worshiping me. <laughs> I think we think that worship is the song. Worship ain't the song. Worship is the music that comes from the perspective of your life. You see what I'm saying? Like, whenever a rapper goes into the booth, 
he's writing a song from his life and then you have the soundtrack but then there's an actual story that comes along with that that's the real life you just have a soundtrack to it a lot of times we're so focused on something that your life begins to play out from it that's why like for example like you know mary j blige's best song is when she broken don't nobody like Mary J. Blige. Just fine, fine. I don't want to hear that. No, 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 no. Nobody want to hear that. I don't want to hear no Mary J. Wing at. I don't want to hear that. Oh, no. But when it's not going to cry in them dark shades, no, that's what I want to hear. I'm sorry. It's like, hey, hey, hey. I want to hear about what your good relationships. What, 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 when your next breakup? That's, that's the album I want. You, when you break up with somebody, that's the album I want. But for real, you know what? There's certain artists I don't, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear when you're happy. You know what I'm saying? Like Janae Eco. I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear when you're happy. But 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 when you trigger, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> you play that. But what but what is that? It's the soundtrack of brokenness. It's the soundtrack of brokenness. And it comes from a broken life. But I came to tell you today that because Jesus was broken, you can be healed. And because Jesus is now your healing. When you worship him, watch this, when you worship what's healed, your life will reflect that. When you worship what's healed, your life will reflect that. When you worship, and watch this, don't, don't think worship as like false God worship. Like don't, don't think that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your full attention to the problem. That's what we're, all worship is. is what, listen, whatever has your attention the most, that's what you're worshiping. Like when people say you're worshiping your job, that's what has your attention. I think we put this religious connotation to so much stuff. It's like, no, you can worship your car. You can worship your money. Why? Because that's what gets all of your attention. When you worship God and you live a life of worship, when you have anxiety, when you have worry try to attack you, it's not to say that you're not going to feel it. You just know how to face it. I'm not trying to get anybody to run from worry, run from, the, from anxiety, run from depression. No, you have to look at it in the face. And watch this. When you look at it in the face, you don't go in your name. You go in the name of Jesus. Jesus said something so good. He said this in, he said this in Matthew, Matthew 6, verse 25. He says, therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. In other translations, it says, do not worry about your life. But I like the original. It says, take no thought for your life. Watch. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. It's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. What he's saying here is, like, yo, your life is more than what you eat, what you shall drink, and what you wear. Your life is more than that. He says, don't even worry about that type of stuff. He, and this is the thing, when, when you know who holds your future, you don't have to worry in your present. When you know who has you, when you know it, I'm sure you put full confidence in your husband. You know he got you. You know he got you. So if you know he got you, you ain't got to worry. Now, of course, as men, we do stuff that we ain't got no business doing. You know what I'm saying? You know we should have took out the trash. You know, I understand that. But that, those are just moments. What happens is we take the moments and make them a movie. That, th think about it. Whenever a feeling hits you, you have 30 seconds to respond. You have 30 seconds. Whenever a feeling hits you, you have 30 seconds to respond. A lot of times when a feeling hits us, we watch it. And then it go from a clip to the full preview. Then it go from the preview to a short film. Then it go from a short film to a movie. Then it went from a movie to a docu-series. <laughs> then it went from a docu-series to a, to a whole long Netflix show or a series and now it's going and, and watch this every season of life that same season and keep going and keep going and, and, and watch the reason why Jesus says take no thought for your life because worry lives up here it lives up here it lives up here and it's amazing how we can worry about something that hasn't even come to pass yet that's all worry is you've made an assumption on this side because worry tells you this is what's going to happen this is what's going to happen. You haven't even seen you. Listen, it's something that's a month away and you could be worried about it. Well, what's going to happen here? Listen, God has you. You know, God can change your life in 30 seconds. God can change your life in one second. The children of Israel went from being slaves to being rich in a matter of seconds. Think about that. 
God delivered the children of Israel. They went from broken, being slaves, and the Egyptians said, listen, y'all got more powerful than ours. Just take all our stuff. Take the gold, take it all. We don't want nothing to do with him. Watch this. And God was the provider. They went from working and building bricks to now being prosperous. Who gave it to them? God. I came to tell you today, you are, you're not supposed to worry about provision. God has you. You have something that's more powerful than what the children of Israel had. That's Jesus. Think about that. The children of Israel did not have Jesus. The Bible said the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in your body. You got something that Abraham didn't have. I want you to think about this now because the Holy Spirit could not dwell in you. It could only come upon you in the Old Testament. It could only come up and down. Why? Because Jesus didn't die yet. Once you accepted Jesus, you have his spirit. You have something on the inside of you that's more powerful than what David had. And David slayed giants. If David can slay Goliath, you know you're supposed to be slaying depression. I got even better news. It's already been slayed for you. All you got to do is show up to the battle. I'm not telling you that you're not going to have a fight. All you got to do is show up. Because watch this. Some of us, were not showing up to the fight and we're forfeiting. You're forfeiting a fixed fight. The fight has already been fixed for you. And worry, listen, worry does not have more power than Jesus. Worry does not have more power than Jesus, but if you don't show up, it's going to automatically win. All I'm telling you to do is show up and just hold up the banner of the salvation that Jesus has already provided. So what does that practically look like as far as worry? One thing that I've been trying to do by the help of the Lord is do what we did earlier. Take a deep breath. Because, you know, like a lot of times, like, you know, like you like that's what a panic attack is. And now you feel it. And now we get ready to move into anxiety because now you're starting to feel it because worry, anxiety are a little bit different. Worry is somewhere in your mind. Anxiety is starting to play out in your body because now you, for example, this morning I was leaving. I was leaving the house. My wife laughing at me now. I was leaving the house. You know how like when you driving and you like and you done picked up so, mo so much momentum that you can't stop at the yellow light. So <laughs> don't judge me. Listen, the yellow light hit. The yellow light was on, but I was a little bit far back. So. I hit the line and the light turned red. So I'm like, all right, I can't, like, I tried to hit the brake, but I just couldn't. So I was like, all right, we're going to take this. As soon as I took it, it was a policeman right there at the other light. Right, yeah, ooh, that's exactly what I did. I said, ooh. And immediately, guys, immediately, like, my heart started racing fast, all that. And my wife just looking at me like, <laughs> she, she looking at me like it's just dumb <laughs> like, why, why, why would you do that but immediately like and this is the thing we were talking but as soon as I saw the police officer like and then as soon but watch this as soon as I got through the light I kept looking in the rearview mirror and he probably didn't even see me but what happened I saw, I saw myself being stopped in my mind a lot of us we do that a lot of us we do that a lot of times our anxiety, well, I'm not gonna say that because it's not our anxiety. Anxiety tries to hit us, but it's triggered by something. So let me let me ask you all this. What what um does anybody have a trigger that like sets them off when it comes to anxiety? That, that, that's 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 real. That like that's real. I got pulled over uh mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So he, he pulled me over for that. Mm -hmm. And his, his aggression and tone, the way he pulled me over over left turn city made me feel like I had 15 kilos of cocaine in the back. So, <laughs> he made you feel like you had some bricks. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, he was like real aggressive and like immediately. Uh, and I guess it's from, you know, we see so many images of police brutality. Right, right, and, right, right, right. And right. just replayed and replayed and replayed. And start to vicariously take on that right that that trauma and that's like, good that's good when i think about it that made my heart because i'm like this could go south for no reason at all mm -hmm. yeah. uh, i was on the back street on baby four road and um uh the, 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 gee that's whoo i'm getting anxiety too <laughs> yeah, dang it, boy. <laughs> and it, was, it, was, it was two police it was two police cars three police and um uh, they looking out through my windows and um just real intense mm -hmm. um, down like when you know we figured out like you know I ain't, I ain't had nothing going on and you mm -hmm. know I'm you know I'm just, I just go to work every day you know what I'm saying do my thing 
game. Mm-hmm. Like, um, just hands on the guns, and I'm. It, mm. it was just like a real yeah. moment. Yeah. Like, I had no reason to be that afraid of police personally. I mean, I've had run in with police, but right. I think just to add it on. Right. Police brutality you see on social right, media. Right, 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 right. It's, right. Right. it's, it's just cop bad. Right, so, right, right, right. Yeah. I won't even go. If I see a police going like I was going to work and the police was in a parking spot where I used to park, right. I went to the other side. Right. So I don't even want to be over there. Right. So. How does anxiety play out for you all? Like what are some what are some things that like you know, okay, here we go again. Like what are some things in your body that kinda happens? Yeah, all right. I get like my head starts to hurt. Like I just feel mm. like pressure in my head. Mm. Mm. Sometimes I'm breathing like hard. Uh, yeah. 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 I get hot. My yeah. body like gets hot. Like hair start raising up on my legs and stuff. Like it's crazy stuff. Yeah, bro. My armpit sweat. I swear, when I saw that police officer, die! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> yeah, bro. Me. Right. You ever feel like your heart is all the way down to your stomach? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I agree. For me personally, like uh, I kind of carry things well, so it manifests in my sleep. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Wow. Wow. Or restlessness. Like, I can't, when I toss and turn, I can't sleep, and there's not, like, a reason why. I just mm-hmm. can't get settled. Like, yeah. Maybe it's just something that's keeping me up. I yeah. think that's how it manifests for me, too. Yeah. So, with, with, with the conversation of anxiety, I was, I was thinking about this, talking with somebody at work. Do you think that it's kind of been exploited lately? Yeah. And this is what I mean. And, I, and I'm going to use this as one example and just and just talk me through it. It seems as if when things become trendy, that people kind of take advantage. Like, for example, like you look at a lot of the, the rappers now, it's almost like like it's cool to be to say I have anxiety. You listen to the music like you like you look at Lil Uzi Vert, you look at Lil Skies, you look at like certain MCs. And like they talk about this in their music, you talk about this in uh, in the music, and it's like, it's like I, I mean I it, I feel like it's one thing to have a conversation about it, but then when you have kids who are who are looking at this, and now like the 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 entertainer may be taking pills because he really has a problem, but now we got kids taking problem taking pills at 11 years old, you know what I'm saying? Because that's that's what they're hearing. And it's like, but it's coming from that person's real experience. Like, like, um, I don't know if you ever heard this growing up. Like, you ever heard somebody say, take a chill pill? Mm-hmm. But like that, that was funny to us. Like, bro, chill out. But that really came yeah. from that. The, the thing of like, no, take a pill. They, we, they used it as a metaphor, but it was like, no, take a pill. Relax. Possibly because of so much trauma, and so much stress. And, and from what I've seen, and this could just be one perspective, it kind of seems like to have anxiety is becoming like a social club instead of like, you know, what's the solutions and how to deal with that. So do you think that that's, that's true or that's like, uh, might be a little off what y'all think? No, I really do believe that's a realistic thing. Um, and I'm just speaking from my perspective on this, mm-hmm. that I used to deal with a lot of stuff that I actually ended up having to go back and get therapy for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or are you just doing it for clout? Yeah, um, that's that's the word, clout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like doing it for clout because right. I see a lot of more people who post up on Facebook like, oh, I'm dealing with depression. And it's not denying that you probably realistically are, mm-hmm. but are you just putting that out there because you're honestly looking yeah. for help or are yeah. you just doing it for attention? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's real, man. Anybody else? Yes, I do. Go ahead. Like when I hear children like middle school and high school talking about I'm depressed or I'm anxiety I'm anxious or ADHD or just anything like Mm -hmm. they just use it so freely and I hear a lot of younger people especially like my little cousins like they just say it just freely like Mm -hmm. like it's just yeah I'm I have anxiety or it just you know they just say it or they say oh this situation happened but um you know I handle I can't handle it because I have anxiety Mm -hmm. or because I have they just identify themselves with that so yeah and it's just like, oh, well, yeah, so-and-so deals with this, and that's just it. Yeah. I think, I think one side of the coin is what we're talking about, but on the other side, I think that social media really yes. has produced this level of, of um, comparison mm-hmm. amongst not just, not just children, but 
adults in general. Because listen, Instagram will have you thinking that somebody is really out here living their best life. And some people really are, but it does not, like I always say, social media shows your highlights, but it does not show your lows. It does not, because if, if all you're doing is showing picture upon picture of every single thing, like for example, I remember um, there was an article that said Kylie Jenner takes 100 selfies before she posts one. She takes 100 selfies before she posts one. Because she has to keep up the image. She has to keep that up. Like, if I, if I post wrong, one wrong pick, that's it. You know, and, and that may be her mentality. I remember John Mayer saying he hires, he pays millions of dollars for security. But whenever he opens his phone, he still lets people in. Pays, pays millions of dollars for security wherever he goes. So, I, so that he's protected. But whenever he opens his phone and reads those comments, because listen, the internet will never lose. They are undefeated <laughs> in every situation. They like Jesus. They are undefeated in every situation. They're not going to lose. <laughs> they will not lose. Whatever is popping, they will win. They will find a way to exploit you, to laugh at you. And the thing about it is, like some, a lot of times, it's just like a little kid that, that's, just, that's just doing it to poke at you. But, but we don't know because we're looking at a screen. But the Bible tells us, it tells us in... In 1 Peter 5, verse 7 in the NIV version, cast all of your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Cast all of your anxiety on him for he cares for you. Whatever you don't cast, you will carry. Whatever you do not cast, you will carry. And a lot of times it takes more strength to let something go than to hold on to it. I know like, if you think about weights, you know, it takes a lot of strength to, to push that weight up. A lot of times it takes more strength to let something go because you've kind of created these norms. You've kind of created these habits of holding on to things. You hold on to it because a lot of times that's all we know. A lot of times our anxiety can be, or I'm trying to not say our anxiety because anxiety don't belong to us. I'm trying to not say that, but anxiety can be triggered by experiences a lot of us have been through some very traumatic experiences some of us still do still do with anxiety from childhood a lot of us still deal with it from going to school and being called names and, be, and, and a lot of times we think we just playing but a lot of times like you know like when people go to that high school reunion a lot of times they don't want to go and like they can look totally different but they remember the trauma they remember the pain I know a lot of times even with even with parents like you like Sometimes how our parents talk to us in certain ways, it wasn't that they didn't love us. They dealing with trauma, too. So they dealing with trauma. They don't know how to communicate. How many of you all kind of dealt with just being honest? Like, like for me, I go first. Like my mom, she worked two jobs trying to put me through Christian school. So she dealt with a lot of stress. So a lot of times just even in her response. And we talked about this. So, you know, ain't no bad blood. That's my mom. I love my mom. We, we close. A lot of times how she would communicate to me, I wouldn't understand but because it's like, yo, she's dealing with certain things. She's dealing with the stress of two jobs. My father, my father not there. She's got to be the mama and the, and the daddy. So a lot of times that kind of plays out. Like, have you all kind of been through that same type of thing with parents? Yeah. And I think when you become a parent or when you become older, you understand. You, 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 you really understand. Like, I think one of the moments of maturity in my life is when I, the first time I ever felt sympathy for my father. Me and, my, me and my father had a conversation and I was talking and I was just asking, I said, bro, why'd you, I was like, why'd you have so many children that you weren't going to take care of? Like, I got seven brothers and sisters. And the response that he gave to me was that, man, it was more children before you. They just all had abortions. And the thing about it was he didn't take accountability. It was almost like, bro, like, you think that's something. This is even more. And, it's, and it's, it was almost like, bro, I really feel bad for you because you're, you haven't processed this thing. Mm -hmm. I love my father. I love him. But it was the first time that it made me feel like, yo, like, like, man, like, maybe I shouldn't just be looking at this thing on one side. Yo, he's dealt with trauma. Like, w whether you think so or not, whether we deal with abortion or not, whatever, however we feel about it, that still can be traumatic for some people. That it's like, 
I have made all these seeds and, 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 and they've been terminated or whatever. That can be traumatic for people. I think that a lot of times in order for us to build a community or build or, or like build a connection between one another, we have to have empathy for one another. You know, a lot of times not trying to be funny. This is this isn't a conversation that you don't have in church a lot. You don't have the type of conversation in church. Because a lot of times we like to say, oh, just put a praise on it. I want to put a praise on And you shouting in church. But when you go home, it's back. You know, sad part is it's waiting on you when you get back. You left it at home. And a lot of times we like to book and shout. And listen, I, I love all that. I, I like to do it. I, I, you know, I'm churchy. I like to do all that. The problem is we not dealing with this. We're not dealing with this. I believe in I believe in casting demons out. I believe in all that. The problem is when they come out, I still got to deal with the damage that's been done. I still got to deal with that. A lot of times we come to church and we're not getting the answers and we hear something encouraging for the week. But it's like, bro, I'm trying to get through the day. I'm trying to get through the day and we hear inspiration, but we don't hear real solutions. And the solution for anxiety it has to be the gospel. It has to be the gospel. Now, of course, there can be practical things that we can do to um, to to figure out how to maneuver around it. But I don't believe ignoring it is the issue. You have to face this thing. Like one 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 practice that, that, I've, that I've heard some therapists do, they recreate and an, an, a situation that deals with anxiety. What they do is, so let's say, for example, there's this one cat I was watching a documentary. He said he had a fear of sharks because he watched Jaws at a young age and that music, dun, 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 like it triggered something in him as a child. So he didn't go in the water. He said it took him forever to take a bath. Like his mama had to convince him it ain't no sharks in the water because he literally had anxiety. So he was going to Hawaii and his wife wanted to go to Hawaii. He takes swimming lessons. He gets past his fear, right? And then as soon as he's about to get in the water, one of the instructors was being a jerk and was like, hey, guys, watch out for the sand sharks. And he said that it just triggered something. He said for 15 minutes, for 15 minutes, he had a panic attack. But he made up in his mind he had to go get in the water. And that's what his therapist told him. He said, listen, if you feel like you're going like get eaten by sharks, get in the water. Like, just do it. Just get in the water. And he said when he was in the water, his heart was racing. His heart was racing. But then after a while, it was like, yo, like, I'm fine. Like, I'm okay. I'm all right. When you understand that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, this is where we take biblical principles and we apply them to real life. So when the police pulled you over, if it ever happens again, if it happens to anybody, one thing you have to remember, we have to remember our covenant. That you have a covenant with Jesus. What that means is that because I have a covenant with Jesus, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every time to rise up against me in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Now, this might not be for everybody else, but we're talking about you. That I believe that because I am in relationship with Jesus, that no fear can harm me. That no person can harm me. And the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. That's what the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. And that because I am in covenant with God, I can rest. It's not saying I won't feel it. I ain't saying you won't feel it, but I can face it. And it's not going to defeat me. When it comes to anxiety, I believe that as believers, we can have authority over it. The next conversation as we get ready to um, wrap it up and get to more solutions. Has anybody ever went through a season of depression? I was depressed from 2016 to almost near the end of 2017. Now, mind you, I just got married, just had a son. That's supposed to be like the happiest time of my life. But I tell you, I was just so down. My wife would tell you, it, it got to the point where she would literally come in, see if I needed anything, change her clothes, and go to her sister's house. And I would just sit there on the couch because I was just so down. I just, it was just like life was... It's just like every day. And then the thing about it is, it's like sometimes you have good moments. And when your highs are high, you're like when your highs are high, they're high. But when your lows are low, they are low. I mean, they are low, low. So, let, so what were, what were your, your experiences with having depression? Oh. For me, um, I, when I graduated college, we were just 
Mm-hmm. Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. What's up, Corey? Yeah, man. Like, we first got married, you know, like you said, you were excited. Mm-hmm. We had a miscarriage. Mm. And then she had to quit the job. Mm. So, money got tight. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Got real tight. Yeah. So, I'm sitting at the job, like, man, I don't know if we're going to keep this roof on. I remember the days I had to call her. If you guys are married, you know, I'm sitting. I'm sitting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm telling you. Mm. <laughs> Woo! Woo! I'm telling, bruh. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And you know why you don't say it because you're supposed to be in faith. Exactly. You're supposed to. You're the man, so you're supposed to. But it's yeah, but so but it's like it's but it's like, bro, it's like it's almost like you create this expectation. And this expectation you can't meet, and when you don't meet it, it's like after a while you just stop trying. I know bro. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I can talk about it all day. Go ahead. Um, I feel like mm-hmm. like a lot of people No, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I agree with you because you said that you have some good days and you have some bad days. Mm hmm. Like yesterday was like a pretty good day. Mm hmm. I had a good day at work. Mm hmm. I went to a football game. Mm hmm. But it's like you can have that good day, but today is not a good old good day. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because so it was like last week, I may not have had a good day. Mm-hmm. But it's really hard because, you know, I just graduated. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to, like, grow. I don't know. I'm in college now, so I'm just trying to understand and work on certain stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's a big transition. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. And I feel like sometimes that, mm. you know, you just act out of how you feel. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's real. And it's you real. don't really think about the people who are there for you. Mm-hmm. Because you're so focused on yourself. Yeah. Mm. Whew. And like you just act out and make decisions and you don't think about the hurt. Yeah. Because you're so focused on your own hurt. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. But I I think I think what you I think what you just did. I think what you just did and what you're doing now is you're releasing it. Because that's one thing. And with all due respect, no no disrespect in what I'm about to say. That is something that is biblical but it's not being taught. That you have to actually admit that I'm dealing with something. Because what we do is you slap a scripture on it so quick, so quick, so quick. You feel a pain in your leg. Jesus name I'm healed. Yes, I agree. But um, if your leg broke, <laughs> if your leg broke. Now, listen, now, if you got supernatural, hey, I'm with you. But go to the doctor to see what's broken. Get your leg checked out and then say, in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Know what's going on. We don't release nothing. And then we come to church and watch this. This is where religion plays out. Because I know I'm dealing with something. So I got to make myself look good for you. So then when you ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed and highly favored, standing in the seat of the Lord. But what if somebody asks you, 
how you doing? Yeah, I want to kill myself. Then we look at them like, oh, that's, oh, that's crazy. That's real. No, that's, no, that's real. Yes, you can be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and have these thoughts. I'm talking about saved, speaking in tongues, laying hands. Listen, all that type of stuff don't come because of you. That comes because of Jesus. These are real emotions. I went through a season, y'all. Listen, I was driving down the highway after work. And the thought came to my mind. All you got to do is turn the car this way and it's over. It hit my mind. It hit my mind. Tears came down my face because life had just got so bad. It got to the point, Corey, I stopped giving. Like I stopped giving financially because I was just so I was. Just, and I almost got angry at God because I'm like, why am I going through this? Why am I going through this? Right. And, bro, he told me, Spirit of God told me something I'll never forget. And I'm going to tell this to the day I go to heaven. The Spirit of God told me it's OK. I can bless you while you learn how to trust me. He said, I can bless you while you learn how to trust me. And, bro, money just start coming in. Just start coming in. I started, and then my perspective changed because my wife always had clothes. My son always had diapers on his behind. I always had gas in my car. Listen, let me tell you something. Listen, with depression, because I know it well, it's just, it's just your perspective. I'm not denying that you're not in hard times. It's just your perspective. Because I'm telling you something. Your perspective will become your prison. Your perspective will become your prison if you let it. I'm talking about every day I would come into the house. It was like you felt a spirit of heaviness. A spirit of heaviness. But listen to me. You have a hope and his name is Jesus. You have a hope and his name is Jesus. Listen, you cannot allow what's going on on one side of the mountain dictate the miracle that's on the other side. The Bible says there's a story in the Bible with, with, with a guy named Jehoshaphat. He's getting ready to go to battle. And then he didn't know what was going on. So he told the army, hey, let's just start praising God. Let's just start praising God. They start praising God. Watch this. The army turned on themselves and killed themselves. I came to prophesy to you today that after today, your issue is going to turn on itself. It's going to turn on its ear. It's going to turn on its ear. Because in about in about five minutes, we get ready to lay hands, we get ready to lay hands, we get ready to pray, we're about to pray for one another. But I want to give some, some different solutions that we need. Number one, one thing that we have to do, we have to watch our intake. Listen, I'm not, I'm not one of them, them pastors who preach that all secular music is bad. I believe that not all secular music is bad and not all Christian music is good. That's my spectrum. But there are certain things that you can't listen to all the time. You can't listen to Takashi 6 9 all the time. Can't listen to Gummo every day. That Gummo, that Gummo beat hard. Can't listen, to Gummo every, can't listen to Gummo every day. I can't do that. I can't do that. Because you, think about what you're mentally playing. And the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs forth the issues of life. And that's just a simple principle. Whatever you put in, going to come out. If you're listening to Mary J, you listen to certain Beyonce songs every day. Sooner or later, your perspective is going to change. Your social media, listen, take a break sometime. Pastor Stephen Furtick said something that was so good one time. He said, you know, I know how to solve a lot of issues. Just, just, just turn it off. Siri, my Siri wouldn't act up. <laughs> just, just turn it off. Just, just, just turn it off. Just turn it off. It's too much sometime. It's just too much. Just turn it off. Another thing we have to do, I know when I was going through depression, I listen, I thought my life was over. When I tell you I was going to cook out about four or five times a week. I was a lot of times. Listen, I'm being for real. A lot of times it's it's not it's really not how you feeling it's what you eating. And I get it because I used to go and get me that cheddar style with cheese fries and a corn dog and a cheer wine and an Oreo milkshake. And won't, it won't spend over ten dollars. Oh, oh, I was good. Oh, I was good. What? I'm telling you now, that was my lunch. <laughs> that was my lunch. But I'm th imagine eating that all the time. Eating that all the time. I'm telling you, but the only thing I was greeting, was eating green was some airheads or something. That's the, only, that's, the only green, <laughs> that's the only green I was eating for a minute. Some airheads or a sucker or something. So a lot of times we gotta like, we have to watch what we're eating. And listen, you're not doing these things 
so that God can be pleased with you. God is already pleased with you. But we're talking about we're talking about healthy, being healthy. And listen, a lot of times our mental state is based on certain things that we do, what we eat. And we got to drink more water. You got to drink water. Water. Listen, you have to drink water. I'm telling you for real. Like a lot of times if you stressed out, go get you some water and just sit down. That's another thing. Sit down. Yeah. Sit down. Some of y'all always got to be, no, you ain't always got to be doing something. Sit down. <laughs> Sit down. It's okay. Like, to encourage you. My wife, my wife, she, we be in the same season. Sit down. It's okay. My wife, she, my wife, she come out and just give me the baby. My son's still getting used to me. You know what I'm saying? He still is. So, so I, I'm good for about two minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did that two minutes. Oh, he crying. You know what I'm saying? But, like, sit down. Relax. It's okay. The reason why you have to be seated is because Jesus is seated. The Bible says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the father. Why is he seated? Because he finished the work of the cross. When something is finished, you sit down. Okay. When something is finished, you sit down. Right. So. And watch this. When I'm talking about sitting down, don't only sit down physically, sit down mentally. The Bible says there remaineth a rest for the people of God. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. You're supposed to be rested because Jesus already conquered everything in your life. Everything in your life. Everything. It's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. Chris, can you?